Okay, friends, we want to make sure that we blow off any of the dirt or debris that's in this area. The less dirt that we have here, the less dirt that could make it inside the engine. Next, we're going to remove the air intake system. Loosen this clamp and this one right down here. Set this aside. Now let's remove this bolt right up here. And this clamp right here, we'll just loosen that. Grab onto this piece, give it a little wiggle, remove it. Now let's move along to getting this out of the way. Just pay special attention to where the sticker is. It's on the lower aspect, closest to the valve cover. Grab this little gray tab, give it a little squeeze, draw this off of the valve cover. I'm going to just do the same thing to the top. And now we'll set this aside. So now we're going to start disconnecting some of our wiring. I'm going to start right up in the front here. Squeeze this tab, draw it right off of there. Every time I disconnect an electrical connector, I always like to look for funny colors. If you see any corrosion, it's something that needs to either be serviced or replaced. Now let's disconnect this one. Lift up on that tab, slide this out. You're going to see that you have four ignition coils going down the line. Let's disconnect all four of them. Up along the top, you're going to see some gray connectors. Those lead to your fuel injectors. Remove all four of those connectors as well. Give this a little squeeze. Pop that off as well. Okay. At this point, you're going to notice that you have some anchor points holding your wiring down. We want to grab a little fork tool and pry these away from the valve cover. I'm just going to grab onto this wiring harness, give it a little wiggle, try to draw up the connecting clip. There we are. Comes across here, and then over here. Okay, this is looking good. Let's get this off of here as well. We can set this aside, it won't be bothering us anymore. Let's continue on by removing our ignition coils. You're going to find a mounting bolt on each one. Now let's just grab onto that, twist it and lift it up and out. There's our coils. We're going to do the same to all four and when you take them out, put them in a spot where you can remember which order they came out of. So the front cylinder can be on the left and then work your way to the rear as you go to the right. Let's take this wiring, slide it over towards the center of the engine. Now we're going to remove this from the vacuum booster. Just give it a little wiggle and you should be able to pry it right out of there. Once you've done that, we're going to lift up on this piece right here and try to get the tube off of the valve cover. There we are. Let's set that aside. Let's grab this wiring. We'll set this aside as well. The next thing we need to do is remove the mounting bolt that holds the dipstick to the engine. We want this to be able to have plenty of room. If you were to feel down along the dipstick, you'll be able to feel where the bracket is and of course the 8mm headed bolt. Let's go ahead and remove that. All right. There it is. There's our bolt. And now the dipstick can move around. Before we continue on to removing the valve cover, let's cover up the ports that lead into the engine. That way there are no debris can make it inside. You have one here, one here, and then one located right there. Just go ahead and cover those up. And now we're just going to take our blow gun and once again blow off any debris that might be in this area. Next we're going to remove our nine mounting bolts. You're going to find four mounting bolts that look like this up along the top and then five down along the bottom of the valve cover. Let's remove them all. Now that you have all the bolts nice and loose, let's continue on with a nice rubber mallet. We're just going to give the valve cover a couple loving bonks to try to break it free from its holding point. After you've done that, we'll just lift it up and get it out of here. There it is, friends. With the valve cover off, it's a good idea to make sure you get off any debris that's remaining around this area. 
I'm going to typically do this with a vacuum cleaner, get off the majority of it, and then I'll continue on by scraping it with a nice razor blade. Certain areas that you want to pay attention to is along the front area of where the valve cover used to ride. You're going to see that there's RTV or gasket maker located in two areas. One up along here, and then one up along the lower area down there, which is in the same exact area as this one. Let's go ahead and vacuum this off. We'll scrape it down, get it nice and clean. Once you have it all scraped down, just go ahead and wipe it with a nice clean rag with some parts cleaner on it. We want to try to get off as much of the debris as possible along the area where the gasket's going to ride. Now that we have this all cleaned up, let's remove our mounting bolt for our solenoid. Something to think about when you're removing this screw is you want to make sure that it does not fall out and drop down into the engine, so just be very careful for that. Let's give this a little wiggle. I'm going to hold that screw. There it is, friends. All right, friends, now it's time to get our new solenoid in here. Just carefully slide it right down and in. We'll start in our mounting bolt, snug it up, and then we'll torque it to 44 inch pounds. All right, friends, so we took our valve cover over to the bench. And just a small disclaimer, I'm going to be replacing the valve cover and the gasket, but more than likely, you're not going to be replacing the valve cover. So a couple things that I want you to pay attention to. Looking inside the valve cover, you can see that there's a whole lot of crud that generally gets built up, and it's typically going to be along the back side of the engine where the valve cover was. So as you can tell, there's a lot of stuff on this that's going to need to be cleaned up. You can use some parts cleaner or even a nice parts cleaning machine. Typically, not everybody has one of those. So a little bit of parts cleaner, wipe it down with a rag or scrape it down if you need to. After you've gotten everything on the inside clean, you also want to make sure that you clean up the area where the gasket's going to ride. Typically, you can do that with a nice flat razor blade. Just go nice and flat along the valve cover like this. That's going to ensure you get the majority of the debris along the edge. That way there you can make a nice bond. And of course, if there's anything in the center, just take a nice flat screwdriver and get in there as well. Once you get all that clean, we're going to come along to removing and replacing this gasket right along here as well. Typically to do that, you just find a socket that fits right inside there, right up against the seal. And then we're just going to give it a couple loving bonks and drive it out. There's our seal. Obviously you can tell that this is in very poor condition and this is very typical. Now from the top of the cover, let's clean out the insert where the seal is going to ride. Now once you have that nice and clean, you would take your new seal. Obviously this one's used. We'll start that in there so it's going to be as flush as possible. You want to take something that's going to sit across the entire top of this and that way there we can press it down and into the valve cover. So like I said, this one was damaged anyway, but typically what you actually want to do is just make sure that the seat is sitting all the way around perfectly flush, and you want to make sure that it's bottomed out. You don't want any way of debris or anything making its way inside of there. Okay, so let's go with the assumption you cleaned up the valve cover, it looks amazing. Now it's going to be time to reinstall it. When you reinstall it though, you don't want to go ahead and reuse the old original gasket. Typically with these, you're going to notice that they're hard and brittle, and a lot of times they're going to be very cracked. If that's the case, they're not going to make a very good seal, and it really doesn't make any sense to just go ahead and reuse the old stuff. So we're going to make sure that we use a brand new gasket. This is nice and soft rubber, and we know we're going to make a good seal. So now it's going to be time to get our new gasket into the valve cover. A couple areas that I like to pay attention to is the areas that have these nubs. You're going to see that there's going to be two of them on your valve cover gasket, and there's also going to be two on your valve cover itself. That's going to kind of let you know where this is going to be situated. I'm going to start this in right like this and just go right along the line. What essentially we want to do is make sure that all the curves line up with the corresponding curves on the valve cover. If they don't, more than likely the gasket's just kind of twisted. All right. Once you have it situated, just kind of go around one more time and make sure everything's pushed in as far as it can. We're going to try to make it so this does not fall out during the installation process. Now we're just going to take a little bit of engine oil and just go around the inner portion of this seal. That's going to help lubricate it so the solenoid can go through. All right, friends, back over at the truck, we want to grab some black RTV gasket maker. 
Just get a little bit of that on our finger, and we're going to go along those two areas that we cleaned up. You want to make sure that you fill in the cracked area. That way there you'll have a nice seal when we put our gasket and our valve cover on. Now it's going to be time to get our valve cover back on. Something that we want to pay special attention to is the solenoid right here. You want to make sure as we're putting on the valve cover, we don't bonk on this and potentially break it. Carefully slide this in. You want to pay special attention to that gasket as well. Make sure that it doesn't fall out of there and get caught on something and potentially ripped, torn, or damaged in any way. Okay, now that I have it close, I'm just going to kind of feel around that gasket, make sure it's still up and inside the valve cover before I completely set it down and on. Let's slide this down, paying attention to our solenoids coming through the seal. Okay, perfect. Now we're just going to go ahead and start in all of our mounting bolts and when we tighten these up the way that we want to do it is starting from the center and then working our way out. That way there as we tighten it it's going to potentially push the gasket a little bit away instead of bunching it up towards the center. Now let's torque this to 89 inch pounds. Come up diagonal. Now it's going to be time to get our ignition coils reinstalled. To do that, you want to make sure you use a little bit of dielectric grease and come right inside this boot area where the actual spark plug is going to ride. We'll do that on all of these and then we'll get ready for our install. As we reinstall these, we want to make sure we put them back into their corresponding cylinders right back where we got them from. Start in that bolt snug it up and then torque it to 53 inch pounds. Do the same to all. Now that the coils are on, let's get this back onto the valve cover as well. Okay, reconnect it to your brake booster. Make sure that's nice and secure. It needs to have good vacuum. Very important. This looks great. Let's continue on by connecting in some of our wiring. As we connect in the wiring, you're going to happen to notice that there's black connectors and gray connectors. The two of them are going to be located very close to each other. And the black one is going to go to your ignition coil. Give it a nice clip. Give it a nice pull. Make sure it's completely secured. The grays are going to go to your fuel injectors. Do the same down the line. Working our way back up here, we have our forward connectors as well. Let's make sure we get this connected in. And then of course we have over here. Put that into its securing point. Now let's re-secure the rest of this. Bring it down here. Coming down along the front, we've got our forward sensor. Of course, re-secure that wire. Feeling down along, let's continue on with securing everything. We don't want anything dangling or moving around on its own. Okay, double check everything. Make sure you don't have any loose connectors. If anything's falling out or you have a connector that isn't connected somewhere, obviously that's going to be an issue. This looks good, so let's move along. Let's get this out of the way. Let's get this vapor line back on here going to clip on right here and then right down here. We want to make sure that we get this off of there. Set that aside for recycling. Click this in. Make sure you lift up on it. Make sure it's completely secured. Same thing with this one. That feels great. Let's get this back on here as well. Just going to grab that clamp. Slide this right onto the intake. Bring it down so it matches up right here. Make sure this is completely fastened and it's all the way up against there. You don't want to suck any dirty air into there. Start in this mounting bolt, snug it up, and then torque it to 89 inch pounds. Now let's go ahead and re-secure our oil dipstick tube. We've got our little mounting bolt. I'm just going to reach down here. I'll start in the bolt and snug it up. All right, friends, now it's time to get our intake back on here. Let's get this right up against this one up here. As you go to install this, you want to make sure that it's completely flat up against. 
We'll snug it up. There we are. Do the same thing for this one. You want to pay special attention. Make sure it's completely flat up against here and secured. You want to make sure that there's no way that dirty air can get sucked into the engine. Okay, friends, after you've gotten that oil change done, go ahead and start up the truck. You want to make sure that you don't have a check engine light on. Assuming there's no check engine light, take it for a road test. 